My name is Malia Shurik, and I was in the Aurora Theater mass shooting. My sister stutters, and she goes to this conference every year, and this year it was in Colorado. Um, coincidentally, we decided to go to the midnight showing of The Dark Knight. There's a big group of us, so there's about 10 of us, just us with our parents. So that was seven years ago, so I was 20. The theater was very full. There was probably three or four different showings of the movie. We were all together and it was like this movie, you know, midnight showing, it's really popular and there's gonna be a lot of people and it's a fun outing. I guess about 10 minutes into it, there's like a sequence in the movie where there's a lot of, you know, gunfire and kind of um, loud noises. The door right by us opened and all of a sudden there was all this popping and smoke. He had thrown in a smoke bomb. I think at the time, most people in the theater thought it was part of the showing. I sort of thought that too, because it was a midnight showing and like, oh, maybe this is an immersive experience. We were all in the aisle, so we were pretty close to it. And I remember thinking, nobody else in this theater is really reacting. Nobody else thinks this is weird. And then he went into the theater next door to us and opened fire. And at that point, bullets came through the wall from the theater next door into our theater. And again, people weren't really reacting because you don't think shooting. I mean, I guess more recently you do because it's become more commonplace. But in 2012, we didn't really think shooting. The friend who was sitting behind us got shot in the arm and started you know, bleeding. Honestly, that's probably what saved us because even if we didn't really know what was going on, at that point, it was time to get out. Even as we were getting up to get out of this theater that was being shot up, nobody else was really getting up around us. I remember being kind of embarrassed, like, sorry, we're, you know, disrupting your movie you know, as we all get up to leave because our friend is bleeding. He'd been shot through the arm and was covered in blood. And even when we got out into the lobby, there weren't people there yet. I do remember hiding behind the concession stand because I think at that point it was like, we didn't know whether somebody was coming after us. People started coming out of the theater next to us and our theater. Um, there were other theaters too, but I think our two theaters were the ones, you know, because he was shooting in one and the bullets were coming through the wall in the other. We didn't call 911, but somebody did, and the police were pretty fast. So by the time we were out there, police were already showing up. We kind of were splintering into, you know, groups running. And I was with my sister and our two other friends, and we were kind of trying to duck behind cars. At this point, his gun had jammed, and he ended up back in his car, which was back behind the theater, trying to reload his gun, which is where he got caught. Um, so there could have been you know, way more casualties. 12 people died, which was also crazy because it was like 12 people died and we were there with 12 people. Um, I remember just screaming with my sister, just kind of screaming why and, yeah, why? Just kind of, you know, because why would a person do something like that? It was so out of, nowhere there's you mean you don't because this was seven years ago and mass shootings were not as common as they are now which is horrible but it was also it was so out of nowhere it was so you know something that you don't even think about happening when you're going to a movie we realized that we were separated from the friend who had gotten shot and we 
needed to get him into an ambulance. And there was kind of a setup along the curb where people that were the most injured were kind of sitting and waiting to get into ambulances because the ambulances were too full. And cop cars started transporting people because there weren't enough ambulances and the ambulances were too full and weren't getting there in time. They didn't want to put Gage into an ambulance right away because he wasn't as critically injured as some other people. And he was amazing and just very strong about it because he was, I mean, he was hurt, but he, he wasn't in danger of, you know, losing his life. And he was very strong about, you know, like, no, put people in these ambulances and in these cars that are more in need of, of medical attention. Um, I remember seeing a woman holding a baby with one hand and her head with the other and her head was bleeding. Um, and there were people still coming out of the theaters, the screaming, you know, like my boyfriend and my husband or, you know, my friend is, you know, in there and they're hurt or they're dead or they're, you know, I can't find them. Um, there wasn't enough help. There weren't enough, you know, people to help everybody that needed help. You know, at this point, the gunman had been caught but the, you know, the damage was done. There wasn't anything that anybody could do for the people that were dead um, in the theater. I mean, there was like triage outside and like just kind of, I mean, there was just chaos. It was just chaos. We got Gage into an ambulance and one of our friends went with him. And so then there were 10 of us. We were trying to find each other and we, um, we had come in multiple cars and we'd also been calling our parents, you know, over and over again, but they were back at our hotel and they were mostly asleep because it was, you know, 1 a.m. at this point. And just like leaving, you know, insane messages and trying to get them to, you know, pick up. And we all got back into our cars and just drove away. And we got back to, you know, the hotel and they, they were all just standing outside, you know, I mean, the hotel staff had also been, you know, notified and they had like water and they, you know, gotten our parents awake and they were all kind of just standing there outside, just like waiting for us to drive up. And I remember getting out of the car and just like starting to just like cry or like scream or both, I'm not really sure. Um, Cause we were all, you know, home and we were all safe. Um, and Gage was at a hospital and he was going to be okay. And I mean, we'd gone with such a big group and we'd all come out of it okay. I don't even think we really understood how big of a thing it was because we didn't know how many people had been hurt. We didn't know how many people were, you know, dead. We didn't know any of the numbers or anything until the next morning when, I mean, it was the only thing on the news. Obama was talking about it. It was a big deal. Was 12 people died, 75 or more were injured. Like Christian Bale went to the hospital in Colorado to like talk to people um, and like, I guess, provide morale and support, which was kind of cool. Um, we were in Colorado for four days and it just happened to be this day and we just, happened to go to this movie. When we got back to California, we went and saw The Dark Knight in a theater. Like we wanted to have it in the past instead of just having this kind of control us. I feel like if I didn't go see a movie right away after, I feel like I would not have gone and seen a movie ever again. I don't really like going to movies anymore. <laughs> Any crowd I'm in, any store or county fair, Disneyland, grocery store, movie theater, anything that I'm in with a bunch of people, I think about, you know, what if someone were to come in here and start shooting? Where would I go? How would I get out? What would I do? I think about, like, if I'm in a crowd or something and I'm with people that haven't been through a mass shooting, how could my experience benefit them? Maybe I could save somebody. Maybe I could pull somebody out of a situation faster. Definitely now, 
I'm 100% any kind of loud noise, car backfiring, fireworks, anything. I think gunshots right away. And I think in terms of putting that to good use, um, you know, if there's somebody in a situation who's not thinking that, I, you know, and it does become a dire situation, then I could probably help other people. There's a lot of bad people in the world, and there's a lot of harm and, you know, terror being caused by a lot of people, but there are a lot of good people, and there are a lot of people whose instinct it is to help. The police officers who use their cars as ambulances and the people who designated a spot for the injured people to gather so they could get into ambulances and cars as fast as they could and people that went back inside to look for injured people and look for missing people and there will always be people that want to help and that will help and that can help and those are the good people and they have to outweigh the bad.